Hey guys, it's Amy, your golf coach. Welcome to Beginner Driver Series. Today we're going to talk about your arch nemesis and how to conquer it. The number one miss off the tee is the slice. What is a slice? It doesn't matter if the ball starts left, right at the target, or right at the target, it curves at the end to the right. That's called a slice, leaving your ball in the trees or out of bounds. If the ball starts left, it's a pull slice. If the ball starts right at the target and curves right, that's a push slice. Either way, it's the same slice. And we don't like slices because it's really hard to work with them when you're out on the golf course. What causes a slice miss? It could be your hip spin out or hip thrusting forward. It could be your upper body getting too tense and then going over the top or yanking through that causes the slice. There are many different movements that will cause a slice. But there is one common position to all these different moves is the impact. At impact, when you're slicing, most of the times your club face will be wide open at impact and that will cause a lot of curve to the right. So we can sit here and figure out what movements you are doing incorrectly. Work on all those movements first, but the easiest way to take it is to actually work on that release. If you start working on that release through the ball so the face is more square at impact, eventually that's going to help improve the rest of the movements, whether it's the thrust forward or the spin out. The first priority for us to work on is the release, and that's exactly what we're going to do today. So we're going to be working on that release to get club face more squared impact and releasing beautifully through the ball. How are we gonna do it? With an Amy Fight drill. But you know, when I talk about the release, I always emphasize on one position. That's the post impact. Impact is boom right here at the ball. Post impact is when the club head is about three feet past the ball. If you get that position correct now, you have higher chances of getting into the impact with the square face. It'll make your life easier to square up the face and impact. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Work on your release by focusing on the post impact. Ta-da! I do a lot of tray drills, but I actually wanted to make you a big one. So I have a new tray for you guys today. It's a tray drill. When you are standing upright and you're carrying food on top of this tray, your elbow's probably pointing downwards and you're balancing your food this way. But in a golf swing, you have a spine tilt this way, you're bending over. So even though you feel like you're balancing the food on top of the tray, in reality, the food's not gonna stay there. Just understand that it feels like you're balancing the food on the tray, just not going to appear that way. Anyways, we're gonna work on that post impact position. So when you get to the top of the backswing, you have the tray, you're resting the club in your trail index in this position on the way down. A lot of the times people tend to spin out, go over the top, and the face, if you release the face, the ball's gonna go low left, so that your body's very smart. So after this movement, you're gonna not release, leave that face open, try to make up for that leftness so it goes right instead. So we're gonna do this, get to the top, you're gonna focus on your elbow instead of it flaring out. You see how it went outward? You're going to make it point at your belly button as long as possible. Point at your belly button, point at your belly button, point at your belly button, and then you're gonna point your fingers to post impact as if someone is standing right here and you're about to shake hands with this person this way. If you flip, if you're used to leading with your lead hands and flip throw instead of release, if you don't have control, you're giving someone that you've never met a low five that's very rude. <laughs> so a handshake when you first meet is the most polite way, isn't it? Not a low five. Okay, so we're gonna go like this. Balance your food, elbow points at your belly button, belly button, belly button. Shake hands at post impact. You see how I stayed in my angle, no thrusting forward, no spinning out, no going over the top. My swing is on plane and the face is releasing beautifully. It just improved many different parts of my swing. 
So if you understand the elbow pointing at your belly button and then shaking hands at post impact, let's go ahead and try it with the club in your hands. Pretend like your lead hand isn't even on there, even though it's gripping, zero pressure feels like. You're gonna get to the top, balance the tray in your index, boom, like that. And then you're going to do your best to point the elbow at your belly button as long as possible. You see the lag, it's beautiful, isn't it? So lag, you're gonna point the elbow to the belly button and then you're going to shake hands at post impact. So let's do a practice swing, go slow. Elbow, shake hands, elbow, shake hands, elbow, shake hands. Okay, let's try and take it about 50% speed and just make light contact using the elbow and shaking the hands. Whoa, I released it like on time, that was great. Do that a couple more times when you're used to it, just kind of add speed and let's go up to 100% speed. Oh, I was trapped. So if you're having issues slicing off the T, let's work on your club face at impact, get that release going by doing that tray drill, elbow to belly button, and then shake hands at post impact. Once that gets more comfortable in your body, you will be surprised how many other motions in your swing gets better and better. And that's really going to get your swing to free up so you can hit more fairways and hit it past your playing partners. Thank you so much for golfing with me today and see you in the next one. Mwah.